Episode 9, How to Start a Business on a Shoestring. Welcome to the Be Your Own Boss podcast, the young entrepreneur's guide to starting a business. Whether you're thinking about business for the first time or you have an idea that you want to develop, then this is the podcast for you. I'm Mary and I'll be guiding you through this 15-part series that will keep you on track and help you think through the challenges that come with starting a business. Part of the Welsh Government's Business Wales service, Big Ideas Wales raises aspirations and supports young entrepreneurs' ambitions for business. Part funded by the European Regional Development Fund, Big Ideas Wales supports young people through online resources, business skills workshops and one-to-one sessions with an advisor to help your ideas become a reality. To get in touch with us, you can like and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Message us and one of the team will get back to you. Call us via the helpline on 03000 60 3000. Live chat on the Business Wales website. Or you can email us bigideas at gov.wales. Hi everyone. Let's just have a quick recap from episode 8 where I talked about creating your business plan. From building a budget to SWOT analysis, remember always make sure to think smart. Now though, it's time to talk about starting a business on a shoestring. There's one thing you don't need to worry about, and that's not having the money to start up a business because you can do it quite cheaply. We've touched on working to a budget in previous chapters when looking at getting online and market research, so now you need to think about starting small and lean, which will allow you to build up a profitable business in the long run. Testing the water without risking too much money is known as bootstrapping or using a lean model canvas. If you're starting a business on a budget, this is the model for you. Lots of successful businesses have started this way, from having little or no money at the time of startup, so don't panic. It's not easy though, it's hard work. You have to do everything yourself and there are no shortcuts. The brilliant thing about it is, you don't need to wait for funding to come through and get things started. Bootstrapping isn't just about keeping your costs down. It's about creating a lean business that makes profit. You have to start small, testing as you go and making sure that you can get the basics right before building the business up slowly. Business owners that embrace bootstrapping often do really well and it creates business professionals who are resourceful, hardworking, persistent and they never stop learning. But if you have to do everything yourself with no shortcuts, you'd have to be. I love giving you helpful tips, so here are the 10 ways to start a business on a budget. 1. Work from home. 2. If you're putting your business online, build your own website using free or cheap apps like Wix or WordPress. 3. You can sell on established marketplaces like Amazon, eBay or Not on the High Street. Or why not sell via a market stall or pop-up shop? 4. You can advertise your business for free on local websites like Gumtree. 5. Why not save money on phone bills and make the most of Skype, Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp? And there might be others you know of as well. 6. Ask for help from friends and family with useful skills like finance, marketing and design. 7. You can use cheap or free marketing tools like email, leaflets, PR and social media. Everyone's on social media, so use it to your advantage. 8. Find freelancers if you need an extra pair of hands with something. But if you think you can do it, then what's stopping you? 9. Use IT cloud service, as most of them are free and this saves on expensive software that could quickly become out of date anyway. 10. Swap skills with other entrepreneurs and help each other out. Create a network of people. If I can give you another piece of advice, it would be look before you leap. Don't think you have to jump straight into the business. You can start by working on the business in your spare time until you can confidently give up your day job. If you're still in school, college or university, then you can continue your studies while starting your business. Use this time to build on the business and make the most of the people around you. You don't immediately need to own or rent a premises to begin with either. You could use open spaces or serviced offices to save on rent, and this is a perfect opportunity to meet like-minded entrepreneurs just like you. You can learn from what you say to each other. 
There's lots of information about these spaces on our website. If you're creating a product, ensure you build a prototype and get advanced sales before you spend money on supplies and manufacturing. Also, to avoid big purchases, why don't you rent equipment and as the business grows, you can consider purchasing your own. You know it's that time to hear from our Big Ideas role models and I had the chance to speak to Lori Johns from Gemwaith Wynn Jewellery. Hi Lori. Hi. You okay? I'm fine, thank you. Thanks for the chat. You're welcome. Now to start with, tell us a bit about yourself and about your business. Um, I'm originally from Llanelian and I started my business about four years, four or five years ago. Um, I make my own jewellery, um, so it's sterling silver um, and I'm from a yeah, farming background, so my dad and my tired mum have got um, some sheep. And after graduating from Bangor, I, I decided to buy some uh, a small flock of sheep that look really cute. Uh, <laughs> they're from Devon and Cornwall, um, so the Devon and Cornwall long wool sheep, and they've got very big curls and yeah, long wool as it says in the in the breed. Um, so because there's so many jewellery makers out there, um, I wanted to design something unique, um, different that would stand out. And um, it came to me one morning, uh, like to com- combine the wool and the jewellery. So I, my pieces have got um, wrapped wool round some, um, yeah, the necklaces and the bracelet, and that's one of my unique selling point. Um, I also personalise the jewellery so you can have your name or date or special um, saying or something like that as well. So. And the wool makes it very Welsh as well, it which does, is important yes. to you. It is, yeah. So um, all the lambs and the sh- yeah, uh, most of the sheep now are bred in, well, my dad's um, farm, on my dad's farm. And um, yeah, so it's got that Welsh woolly twist in the necklaces. And makes it very unique. Um, yes. When did the interest start in jewellery and jewellery making? Um, I've always been one... I've always liked creating stuff. I've never been like a writing essays type of girl. Um, I used to, yeah, graduated from Bang University in product design and they did have a jewellery module in second year, but I knew before starting uni that it was sort of jewellery that I was interested in. And um, I made sure you had to, every year on workplace, on the university degree, you had to go on work placement. And um, I, yeah, researched a few different companies that made their own jewellery and learned through them, really. And then after graduating, I got a couple of jobs, um, one with uh, Emma Kate's Jewellery down in Cardiff, and then I moved down to there. And I learned most of my skills from her. And then after um, working for her for a year or so, I decided to um, start my own jewellery company um, part-time, really. I uh, worked in a cafe and then I was lucky enough, my brother had moved out. And so I changed his bedroom into a little workshop and gradually um, spent my money on tools and silver and started on Facebook and Etsy and Instagram, which is free. It's great, yeah, starter. But then you saw a shop. Yes. So after a year and a half or so of making jewellery and getting good feedback in the fairs, Christmas fairs that I was doing and online sales, um, a little shop on the high street in Conway came up and it was perfect size, uh, perfect location and decided to go for it. Um, So yes, I... Um, I do like handmade stuff. I like to support locally made. So I decided to also sell handmade gifts and cards and like footstools and homeware and stuff in there to fill it up a bit as well. Um, and also I'm, I'm, my workbench is there. So it's, yeah, say if it's a quiet day in the shop, I can crack on with making orders. What have the main challenges been in running a shop as well as the business? Um, well... A lot of time, basically. You don't get much time off. Um, I'm lucky now. I've just um, employed two part-time girls, um, so hopefully I'll get a few days off here and there over the summer holidays. Um, Yeah, it's hard because some days you'll have really quiet days and you won't sell 
you probably make about five pounds all day, but other days you will make, you will hit those sales and make up for it. It's just very up and down. Um, but yeah, summer holidays are great and Christmas for me is the busiest time of the year. People buy in for each, each other. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's an ongoing, it's, you never switch off really, but I do enjoy it, which makes, yeah, a hell of a difference. Yeah. And you have to be passionate about it to Def- make it a success. Yeah, definitely. Cause if you, if you're not passionate, you're not going to give a hundred percent towards your work and people won't invest their money in, in, uh, in you. So yeah, you need to enjoy what you're doing. And would you say that you've learned a lot as you've gone along? Uh, definitely, yeah. I've made a, a lot of mistakes, which you learn from. Um, and I think that's, the, yeah, the key in life, really, to make the mistakes, to learn from them. But, um, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> and there is help out there. Yes, there is, definitely. If, yeah. Um, I mean, family members, I always ask my dad, bless him, but... There's also help online. Any advice for young people thinking, I want to give it a go, I want to start my own business? What would you tell them? Um, For me personally, I started small. Um, Like I said, started in my um, old, well, brother's old bedroom and worked part time. Um, And then if it doesn't work out, you haven't lost that much. All the best for the future. Thank you very much. Thanks for the chat. Welcome. So think about the lean model canvas. It's going to be tough, but the outcomes will be great. And just think, it'll all be down to your hard work. Don't forget to listen to the next episode where I'll be discussing funding, what's available and where to find it. Once again, get in touch if you have any questions. To get in touch with us, you can like and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Message us and one of the team will get back to you. Call us via the helpline on 03000 60 3000. Live chat on the Business Wales website or send us an email bigideas at gov.wales. I'll speak to you all again very soon.